It is time for Ember's next get rich quick scheme. Uh, we're going to go and steal some real estate from a virtual game called King's Ransom Online. Uh, so what we're gonna have to do first is head into these six like domains here to remove all of the players. We can't have any players online because they might detect strange things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the main stage here and we're going to deploy an agent that's going to go into each one of the six. And I actually did end up, I, I didn't know until I had gone back to my solutions, using the this notation in uh, this notation in my solution. So the way that this works is we've talked about before how at rep and then the number of iterations will repeat the same code for you uh, the amount of times that you indicate. This notation here will change a value that's inside your iterations for each time. So it'll start at 800 and then increment it by one each loop. So uh, it'll be 800 on the first loop, but then it'll be 801 on the next repetition and then 802 and then 803 for each one. Uh, so the first one is a starting value. The second one is how much you want to increment. And I'm sh once again, I'm sure that this is very useful later down the road. I just think I kind of never used it. I didn't think I had used it at all. So I'm actually surprised to see it here. So what's going to happen is, and you can see that here. And now that I've hit play, it goes to 80, 800, then 801, then 802, then 803. So I head into uh, XA or XA heads into 800, but first is going to grab the P00 string because that's the player ID for unowned buildings and we're going to need that. So I jump into the stage and I deploy a, an agent. That one's going to go into 800. Then I deploy an agent that's going to go into 801 and they're going to send one into each one. They're each going to execute a kill command three times because I've I, cal I calculated, I went through all the test cases and I didn't see any cases where there were more than three players in a given area. So, and since there's no way of knowing if there are other agents in the area, I just said, just execute three kills. If you execute a kill when there's nobody there, it does nothing. I think it just hurts your activity score a little bit each time that you do a kill. Every time you do a link or a kill, it'll do it. So it's it's fine. I don't think there's any other way to avoid that. So they're gonna go in there and execute three kill instructions. Let's look at XA5, he just killed one, he'll kill two, he'll kill three. And now all of the players have dropped their loot. Uh, but we don't care about that right now. So what's going to happen now is XA is going to alert the players or alert my agents here and tell them you can go ahead and start overwriting everything because uh, we didn't want to do that until after we had deployed and killed all the players. So uh, like it, XA gives a signal to all of them. I just copy one to M because they're all waiting on a void M. I know I'm not doing I'm not describing this well. Like XA5. Actually, let's see who's still waiting. You are. OK, so XA3 is still waiting for the signal to say I can start overwriting it. It's holding the file. So what it's going to do is wait for a message from XA saying go ahead and cool. That one went to XA3. So now what he's going to do is he's going to seek over two because the first one's the name of the building and the second one is the type of the building. We don't care about that. The third one is who owns the building. So we're going to put our P00 that carried over in the X register from XA. We're going to say, OK, this building is now unowned. Now, any other numbers that are on this file past here are sub buildings. So anything that belongs to like the layer under this one and the sub buildings can be multi-layered so you could have a castle that owns three buildings and then each of those three buildings owns another building and then that could chain on and on so what i do is i try to copy f into t if there's something here it'll copy it into t like so now we have 295 and i create another agent that will try and grab file 295 because the number is the file of this other building this guy is going to grab that file and he's going to basically do the same thing. He is going to skip over to and overwrite it to the new, uh, to the unowned building. Three, however, is going to, because it's possible for there to be multiple buildings, is going to try and uh, deploy another agent that would grab any other buildings. It'll copy F into T, but there is nothing else in at the end of the file we're at the end of the file so actually three is going to error out which is perfect because we know he's done so that was a perfect way of using 
<coughs> error handling to terminate our execution agents when we want to. So 3.0 is going to do the same thing. He's going to overwrite the owner there, try and copy F into T again, fail because there's not enough, and it's going to give up. Let's take a look at another one. Let's see if we can find another agent that's got a whole bunch. Okay, this guy, he deployed three other agents. You see XA5 deployed, I guess I see four other agents. Oh, because they're probably one of these buildings had a sub building too, didn't it? That must be what happened. Let's see this guy. Yeah, see, okay, this one had a sub building file 244. So he spawned 5-2 and he's going to grab uh, the next that last building there and he's going to overwrite that and so they're going to keep chaining through these sub buildings i guess that one also had a, a sub building and just keep overwriting them until we basically run out and there you go so go in clear out all the other players and then work our way down the chain of the buildings and the sub buildings to overwrite them as unowned that way ember can sweep in there and take ownership of all of the buildings which i'm sure won't destroy uh the gameplay and uh ruin any market value that the property would have to begin with but there you go